Hello? Hello. Hello. Sorry, we had some technical difficulties, and I'm a little late. Everybody that knows me knows this is a failing they have to deal with in dealing with me. Um, it's unfortunate, and I work hard to improve every day. But we're here now. But are we online? Okay. So um, I wanted to invite you to my virtual market stall here. Normally on Thursdays, I'm in downtown San Francisco at the beautiful Crocker Galleria. It's canceled for the next um, undetermined amount of time uh, because of the crisis. There's nobody in the financial district, so nobody to sell chocolate to. Our other markets are deemed essential services, so they are all open. Uh, you can find me at the Ferry Building on Saturdays, my partner, uh, Tracy, the chocolatier that's manning the camera, is at Shadeland's Farmer's Market in Walnut Creek every Saturday. Um, and then we both can be found at Mountain View Farmer's Market on Sundays if you want to catch us together and shop one of the largest farmer's markets in California. Um, so in lieu of Crocker Galleria, I'm lucky to be here uh, with all of you. Um, and I'd like to thank Uncommon Cacao, the Fine Cacao and Chocolate Institute, and Emily Mantooth and the Ch Craft Chocolate Experience crew for having getting all this together on such short notice. Um, really an amazing event. I was binge watching last night and followed a bunch this morning when I had the chance. Uh, really awesome. Everybody's the chocolate community is a it's an awesome place, and it's fun to virtually hang out with everybody um, now that we're dealing with this unfortunate situation. Uh, so today I'm just going to go through uh, our products, which we offer every week at the farmer's market, and online as well. We're offering free shipping during this trying time, so if you want to try anything, you can order from our website. Everything's on there. Um, and uh, I'm going to go over all of our products um, and then talk about our history, maybe share an early sourcing story from the OTS. Uh, we have a customer scheduled to pick up in about 13 minutes, so you get to see our drive through chocolate service too. If you live in an area where we're located in Oakland, we're on 29th Street in West Oakland, and we have a drive through service available too. Um, all right, so now let's start with our dark chocolate bars. That is where it all began. We have always had, sorry, let's see. We've always had a love for really dark chocolate, and that's what got us into this. Our darkest chocolate is the Noir Bar. Um, we offer five styles of dark chocolate every week in a uh, variety of origins that change on a nearly weekly basis. We're rotating through our stock quite quickly, thanks to all of our customers. We really appreciate it. Uh, so it keeps us making chocolate. The 100% bar, the Noir, is just cocoa beans, just one ingredient. Um, the one we have today is A12. It's a two-bean blend of our Cap Cassien, which is GNS Cacao from Haiti. Very, very fruity bean, but also intense dark chocolate notes. Uh, and it's blended with a, a nutty, mild Forestero from Fazenda Camboa in Bahia. Um, it's very popular. We also have another blend available on the website right now that's at Costa Esmeraldas with the Cam Cam Fazenda Camboa. Uh, called Celeste. Uh, our Nibs bar is 87%. Um, it's, the base is our bittersweet. It's 86%. It has a touch of cocoa butter added. Uh, and then the Nibs, we add unroasted Nibs, uh, rather roasted Nibs, um, straight to the chocolate when you temper it. So it's got this delightful crunch to it. I often call it the ironic bar. Uh, it's high in irony <laughs> in that it has I obsess over, we obsess over getting the chocolate smooth, uh, and then we have the crunch of the unground nibs at the end, but it's also, it's a double entente in that there's a sweetness to the nibs that you don't get in the final chocolate, you know, the, the, 
the bitterness comes out even more when we grind it into chocolate. So the nibs actually, I think, sweeten the bittersweet taste in a way. Uh, our American bar is our sweetest dark chocolate. It's 76%. It's just two ingredients, hence the name. Um, the two ingredient style really took hold in North America. Uh, a lot of people think it's because it's our sweetest bar. But one of the things that makes the farmer's market so great is we get to sample our products directly to our customers and we get a lot of feedback um, directly. We have a question. Oh, okay. How long have you been making chocolate? Crew chocolate? Oh, yes. we started in 2006. We founded Dolcamara Chocolate in San Francisco. Uh, you've never heard of it, I'm guessing, because we never sold a bar. Uh, but we did make chocolate in our kitchen in the sunset for four years. And then uh, we branded as Bizu, and uh, we built our factory in Berkeley, where we still have a mill on Jerry Bunch. Um, and that's, that, those four years were really um, pretty exciting and adventurous, because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> but um, it also, I'll get into it later, but it also was a, a difficult time to, to really source cacao. Um, We've come a long way, I think, in the specialty cocoa market, and we have a lot long way still to go. Um, but it's, I think, the journey is really the most exciting part. So everybody that makes chocolate out there, enjoy what you're doing, even if it seems tedious at times and you feel like you're always just cleaning, um, because you never know where you'll end up. It keeps, you know, chocolate takes you on a voyage. It's a, a wondrous food. And last but not least, our silk bar um, is 78% and it's our mildest bar. And the reason I was saying I like sampling to people is we created the silk for our confectionery. It's a couverture that's got a generous cocoa butter pad. Uh, it also has Madagascar vanilla beans added to it, um, and it's our most popular dark chocolate. Uh, we prefer the darker stuff, that's what got us into it, but the silk is easy to work with, it's really smooth, silky if you will, and people love it. Uh, so that, when I sample that with the Americans, especially when they're in the same, uh, made with the same bean as they are right here, it's the Costa Esmeraldas, uh, lovely expression of nasty now. Um, people are blown away, and it's a great illustration of what we may know as chocolate enthusiasts, but a lot of people don't, in that the way the chocolate is handled from start to finish has a tremendous effect on the end result, and everybody, um, and the choices you make influence the final product. Uh, these two taste very, very different, even though they're similar in percentages, and when we started, we didn't put percentages on the bar. Um, we had them on the back, we were not a big fan, but we ended up moving them to the front because most consumers base their purchases based on these percentages. Uh, so I've just come to enjoy teaching people how percentages are a little more nuanced, like everything in the chocolate world is, uh, and you have to think about it a little. So if you think about it as um, how, how much added sugar is in a, a dark chocolate, it's, it can be helpful. Um, you subtract the percentage from 100, and the remainder should be sugar in a good dark chocolate. Um, and that brings us to our coconut chocolate, which has our CBR is the coconut chocolate with crispy brown rice in it. The cocao is what we call our coconut chocolate the base. It's a dark milk recipe, 50% cacao, and then we add coconut and cane sugar to make a creamy, uh, coconut-based milk-like chocolate. Uh, and the CBR is be quickly becoming our best seller. It's the, the contrast of the smooth, extremely melted coconut chocolate with the crispy brown rice is pretty, um, I find a hard time. I, I can't stop. I eat them one bar at a time sometimes too. That's... <laughs> um, and then we have white chocolate as well. We don't have it in a bar yet, but we do have bark made with white chocolate. This one has caramelized cocoa nibs and tart cherries. Uh, the caramelized nibs give it a little chocolate, uh, and the caramelized notes are nice. 
And then this is a dragon fruit chocolate. It's we actually grind uh, freeze-dried dragon fruit with the cocoa butter, coconut, and sugar that's in the white chocolate, and it gives it a beautiful magenta color. It's not ruby chocolate, but it tastes a lot better, and I think the color is superior as well. And that brings us to our truffles. The truffles are hand rolled. They're really t you got you got to see the truffles to believe them. These are. Uh, I don't have anything to do with those because my hands are too hot. Tracy makes all those by hand. It's a process that takes almost four days uh, and results in a very thin shell of the silk and a creamy coconut based ganache. Um, we generally do white, milk, and dark every week and we change the flavors every week. Um, this week, we're just doing two. Uh, business has slowed a little, I think, for everyone. Um, but we have a white chocolate, one of my favorites. It's the mango chili. It's got sweet mango puree and ahi sugar rush chilies. It's a hybrid that's got a very interesting burn. It comes in very late, so you get the sweet mango flavor and then uh, finishes with a lot of fire. And that's in our white chocolate ganache. And then the milk chocolate ganache is the godfather. It's a cocktail truffle uh, made with whiskey and amaretto in our coconut milk chocolate. And that one is very good as well. We have a salted chocolate caramel. We have dark salted chocolate caramel. I, I'm, I'm kind of winning this, sorry. Um, there's dark chocolate added to the caramel, so it's soft and dark. Um, and then Melbourne Florida cell on top. Coconut haystacks. These are shredded coconut and are silk, and they're tempered. So they get a nice snap when you bite into them, but the coconut gives it a chewy texture, almost like a cookie. And then we do chocolate dipped fruit, which are always nice. We have apricots. We do two different types of dates dipped in our 100%. These are pitted dates. We have majules and baris from Flying Disc Ranch, a fellow vendor at the Prairie Building the Farmer's Market. They're out of Thermal, California, and their bari dates are very juicy and caramelly, not as sweet. And the jewels you know, are very sweet, even with 100% chocolate around them. Candied orange peels dipped and mixed stone fruit dipped in uh, silk. We have drinking chocolate. Um, we offer them 100% and 86%. It's excellent in water, milk, or whatever liquid you choose. And then have a uh, Nibby Cocoa Rub, which is a spice rub with nibs ground into it. Um, excellent for your, for your um, barbecue. Okay, you pitch in my throat. And then, of course, we offer fresh roasted nibs. We have, um, Whatever origins we have in the factory at the time, you can order those in whatever quantity you desire. We also supply other businesses. We have a number of breweries and bakeries that use our nibs. Ghost Town Brewery down the street is available for pickup. They can't serve beer there, obviously, but they have two beers made with our Macau BCSCO nibs, um, the Extinction Event, and the Cat Quarter, their Imperial Stout, and a Order with lactose added. Um, and that, I think, rounds up all the products. Any questions? Any questions, anybody? Um, I said I was going to share a sourcing story. So we started in 2006 in our Sunset Kitchen. And at that time, it was fairly difficult to find cocoa beans. Alchemist had good, John Nancy had good sources for beans. But procuring a, a, a bag of beans was, was pretty tough. Um, we got them through various sources, legal and illegal. I think there was one that was illegal, but we didn't uh, perpetrate the crime and we didn't sell anything that was made from the beans. So I think we aren't culpable. But it was hard to find beans, is the point. Uh, Tracy found someone's phone number on the internet. I don't know how she did this. I think it was just beginner's luck, you know. Um, but she 
called up John Kehoe, who's known as uh, sourcing manager for Guitar Chocolate, uh, historic San Francisco company, um, and just an awesome guy. We come to meet him at chocolate events, and uh, he agreed to sell us a single bag. This is back in 2007, maybe 2006, and we uh, we went and picked it up from a local warehouse. Um, but at that time, we didn't really, we were just delving into the supply side of chocolate and uh, we were getting to know all the horror stories. Um, it was a, at that time, it was especially, it was really plagued with a lot of the things we all hear about in the supply chain. Um, Do you have a favorite origin? A, a favorite origin? Um, I really keep, I like them all. I think that's why we keep changing. <laughs> we use a lot of different beans. Uh, we keep returning to ones we've used in the past. Um, Nasty Now has always struck me as an interesting one because in, um, when we started and, and when was, the story was, was, the sourcing story I'm telling was told, um, it was only Forestero that was considered fine flavor. And this was something that always struck me as odd. Uh, now we know from Mayer's studies that there's a lot of different genetic clusters, uh, and that Criollo was actually a cultivar of the Maya, um, and just one of many clusters. Uh, but Nacional was one that would have been produced commercially, and so this was really interesting to me. Um, so, and the Costa Esmeralda is, is really good. I think I told Freddie at the Craft Chocolate Experience that it was my favorite bean. So I'll go with that one, but it's not my favorite because I love them all. I say every bean has a story, um, and that's definitely true, and part of what I love about Oh, I think our pickup is here. So our curbside pickup is very convenient. Let me wash my hands. Go over to the hand sink over here. Time to demo hand washing. That's, uh, we're all doing a lot of it. Important to be thorough. A lot of people sing songs. I encourage that. I don't do that when Tracy's around. So pick me. The cats start yowling, and it's not pretty. You guys don't want to hear me sing. I make okay chocolate, but I'm not a good singer. Anyways, you want to do it for about 20 seconds and get it under the nails. Get everything, you know. The soap helps break down the, the virus's structure. It actually works better than anything else, so you don't need to use hand sanitizer to get clean. Um, you can basically just wash your hands. It's important to do that. You're getting better at it too. We've always been very conscious of it when we're manufacturing, um, but it's important in all aspects of your life. take time, but they save lives. So when you uh, make an appointment for a drive through you can access when you get here and we'll open the gate for you. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Pretty well, all things considered. Hey, yeah. June. Hi. I got your chocolate, man. Thank you. Awesome. Well, stay safe. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you virtually. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. And there he goes. The chocolate drive through Okay, any more? Any more questions? How does Tracy come up with the truffle flavors? Ooh, that's a good question. Tracy? That's a really good question. Yeah. 
Well, we, we've actually, there's a lot of different ways. Um, usually she just thinks of them. Nailing them on the first try, but we've had suggestions from customers. We always welcome any suggestions. Um, we like to look for classic combinations, uh, like chili mango. I think whiskey amaretto classifies as a classic combination too. Um, but generally, we do fruit and alcohol flavors. Um, oftentimes, we theme them with the holidays. One of our Favorites in rotation now is the Rum Lohange, which was uh, we actually did for Haitian Flag Day when we debuted our Cafe Sien. Um, it was it's the first harvest from a new producer in Haiti, and we happened to get make the first chocolate right at the uh, Haitian Flag Day, so we did a truffle commemorating that by uh, riffing on a classic Haitian dessert. A rum orange cake with vanilla, and it's such a good flavor combo, you know. Um, I think that's that's the key, is just uh, concentrating on flavor, using classics, little tweaks. What do you think, Tracy? You want to weigh in on it? <laughs> All right. Any, any, anybody out there? <laughs> um, yeah, we have people. Cool. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, I'm kind of awkward on camera. I'm a little more comfortable at my market stall. I want to thank everybody that watched. I want to thank Uncommon Cacao. They're amazing. I love what they do. Their work on quality and transparency is without peer. Uh, Fine Cacao and Chocolate Institute. I, again, I don't. I can't think of anything more important than. Um, international standards for quality. That's what we need to do to advance the specialty cocoa sector. Um, and Emily Mantu from the Craft Chocolate Experience, amazing stuff. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm glad we were able to all get together, um, even under such duress. Um, and thank all of you. Bye. Are we still on? Wait, I got one more thing. Did you stop it? I just wanted to say um, that this has been great. Um, it's hard to adapt new technologies, and I think that's the... I'm glad that... Um, I've been spurred on to doing this. I'll try it again and hopefully get better as we go along, you know. I'm looking forward to bringing more stories your way. Thanks again, guys. See ya.